So some people have a good experience sliding into retirement and they kind of have a plan. So if you're, if you're if during your honeymoon phase, you struggled and then you were in the disenchanted phase. Now it's time to regroup and plan. You just have to do it. No matter where you are in your retirement journey, it's helpful to break it down into stages. It's not just a straight line once you leave your career. You know, retirement can last for decades and things can happen along the way. You know, you could lose your spouse or partner. You could have a financial setback or there could be illness or something like that to disrupt your retirement. You know, it's really critical to make sure that you know where you are in your journey and you're always planning for the next phase. So today we're going to share with you the four phases about of retirement. And then at the end, we're going to give you our top ways to keep yourself happy, healthy, and engaged along these four phases. So hang on to the end for that. It's really good. So let's get started. Phase one, let's call it pre-retirement. You know, maybe the last five to 10 years of your career, you know, it's a great time for you to start doing some planning. We did a series on this, and I think it was three videos was. that we took you 10 years out all the way up to the last year, right before you retired. But this, this phase also can be a little disruptive. There can be a little bit of some, some anxiety. Thinking ahead, you're 60 years old, you want to retire at 65. There's a lot of good anticipation, but you might get a little anxious and start to wonder, you know, am I ready for this? Because this is a huge transition. Well, sure. And I mean, one of the most critical and glaring transition is no more paycheck, potentially. Right, right. You know, so many people put off retirement, but sooner or later, if you're lucky, you leave your job and you start setting some real goals for yourself. That's the pre-retirement Right, phase. and there's actually, I know you mentioned the three videos before, which you'll put the link, but there's another video that we did recently about retiring early that was really, really popular. So we're going to put that, uh, I might mention that at the end to remind you, but that's a really good video to look at as you start thinking about your own retirement. But the second phase, we, we call it, or it's been called the honeymoon phase. And this can have all sorts of mixed emotions. So you've left your career, you're venting your retirement, and you're giving it a test drive. Kind of like you do when you get married, right? We gave it a test drive? Yeah, we kept, we're still driving, though. Is it a money-back guarantee? It is not. How many years later? <laughs> <laughs> 14 years later, we're still driving. But this honeymoon phase, you know, there can be different emotions in there. Certainly, there's happiness, right? There's no more schedule no one to report to, and you have lots of freedom. But this phase also can be wrought with some anxiety, right? You know, what will I do now? How will I fill my day? And start to really look at, am I okay financially? We see a lot of pressure in this phase, for sure. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe you start to dream about your future. So you're a year into retirement, six months into retirement, and you're doing okay, but you know, you're a little bored, let's say, and you really want something more. Now is time to start to dream a little bit. This is a critical time, and you really want to make sure you have a plan. You know, a, a lot of what we talk about is around planning, and a lot of people don't want to plan, particularly in the beginning. And one of the choices you have, and we've had clients do this, they take a gap year. They've left their career and say, we're not going to do anything for a year. Not that we're not going to do anything. Was that an option when we were test driving the marriage to take a gap year? Maybe huh. I'll submit for a gap well, year. <laughs> oh, you can submit for a gap year. That's fine. You can have no, it. No, in all seriousness. So, but, but you need some planning right. when the gap year is over right. or the six months. Yeah. So it's okay to step away from everything, to relax and chill and travel, whatever you want. Right. But it's also time to do some planning. Absolutely, because what you want to make sure you're paying attention to is obviously your health, your relationships, your mental well-being, and these all become important things to work on even when you're in a gap year if you choose a gap year. Right. So let's let's talk about phase 3, which is disenchantment, and this is where a lot of clients come to us when they hit this phase. Right. It doesn't happen to everybody, and it certainly doesn't happen if you've started or you're engaged in a solid plan for your retirement. Those that plan tend to thrive and don't stay in disenchantment long. Right. So this disenchantment phase, and it's kind of a bad word. I don't know where we got that from. We probably Googled it and found it. But it's, it's a phase that can last a long time. It can be where you've retired, you're through the honeymoon, you've kind of been retired for two or three years, but things aren't going so well. 
and you don't know really what to do. Um, what happens is you start to get a little bit lonely. You start to wonder, you know, what am I going to do all day long? I don't really have a vision for what I, what I want to do. Maybe your friends are doing better. Maybe your, your spouse or partner is doing really well. But you can't let this disenchantment phase last long. And I think what's important is that this is a phase where you really have to be honest with yourself. If you're not happy with where you are in your retirement, or if you're disenchanted, as we're, as we're calling it, now's the time for you to make a course correction, right? So we have something for you that will stick in the link below to try our free seven-day retirement kickstart program. You know, it helps people entering retirement to get their head on straight. It also helps in this disenchantment phase. So we'll stick that link below. Right. The other thing that happens in this phase is you... Depending upon how long it lasts, there's confusion. As I said earlier, you feel lost. And what you don't want to do is feel lonely because loneliness really is a, a very bad situation for yourself. Chronic loneliness is being lonely for two weeks or more. Right. And it's, it's compared to the same uh, feeling you get if you smoke 15 cigarettes a day or if you're walking around and you're obese that's how bad it is for your health so you really want to be careful and the other thing that can happen is and it didn't happen to us is you can lose touch with your marriage you know while marriage um divorce rates are down in the u.s in the u.s yeah. i believe i don't believe but gray divorce is on the incline yeah. and that's where two folks were let's say working their whole career and they didn't really spend a lot of time together and boom, now they're spending all day long together and they, they kind of lose touch with their marriage and what they, you know. I just read an article yesterday that um, the opening line of it was, divorce after retirement is not uncommon. Hmm. I, that was the title of the article. That, no, that was like the first sentence. And wow. I was like, oh, geez, you know, now's not the time to be, you know, splitting assets and, you know, getting, you know, alone and doing more things unless, you know unless it is the time for you, yes. but you know, so that's not the time for us, is it? I don't think so. Tick tock. No. So, so that disenchantment phase, you know, we just went through a lot of emotions that are in it. And again, that's when a lot of people show up and come to us and that's where we can really help with a plan. So let's talk about phase four. Phase four is when you really regroup and develop a plan. It's so important to that's kick yourself in the ass phase. It is. It's to have the courage to say, I need help. What can I do? How can someone help me and make a change in your life? So some people have a good experience sliding into retirement and they kind of have a plan, but if there's a couple and they're going along fine, that's great. But if, if all of a sudden they're divorced and now they're in solo retirement, everything changes. So if you're, if you're if during your honeymoon phase, you struggled and then you were in the disenchanted phase now it's time to regroup and plan. You just have to do it. And really, it's time for you to sit back and identify what your five or six or whatever your number is, ours was five, key areas of focus will be in retirement. You know, key areas that you want to plan around and you want to build habits and routines, things that you want to start putting in place today so the vision of your ideal vision of right. where you want to be in the future comes to fruition. And again, that seven day kickstart would be great for you guys. If you're feeling anything that we're talking about right now, right. like you're just not clear, it's free, it's great, you'll enjoy it. But the five pillars that we talk about, and you'll hear more about it in that kickstart, is physical wellness. And that's really your exercise, your nutrition, personal health care, whatever it is so that you have good, solid physical wellness. The next one we work on and that we've chosen as our pillar is mental wellness. And, and by that, I mean, you know, thinking about mindfulness. You know, I was in yoga this week and the yoga teacher actually said, you know, mindfulness and being present, you know, actually telling yourself not I'm going to move my arm, but my hand is now in front of me, provide safety to both your mental well-being and your physical well-being. You know, it lowers your stress and anxiety, just being present in the moment. And we're working really hard on that. And I know we use tools like Headspace yeah. and Calm and meditation and journaling. And, you know, there's a lot to be said for your mental wellness during this phase of life. Um, the third area is relationships. You know, human beings need and they thrive 
on deep, meaningful relationships. So who are your relationships right now? Who are the people, the small circle of friends that you have that you could talk to, that you trust, that you hang out with? Start with them, build it deeper, and then make it wider. Get some more friends to, to come into the loop with you. And really dovetailing with that is your spouse or partner relationship. And, you know, after years of working, maybe dual career, working parents and now no children at home and retired and both are at home, this relationship may need attention and work. And you may find yourself spending 24-7 together, which could be great, and it also could be taxing. And the fifth area, the fifth pillar that we focus on is repurposing all of your wisdom to serve others, just like we're doing here with this business. You know, we have a lot of experience. We're using it. We're researching. We're sharing with you some of the things that we're implementing and finding out. So there's a lot of different ways in which you can do that. And all of these five pillars are right out of our online course and our annual mastermind that starts every January. We'll put links below for that as well. But some of the other things you can do for wisdom sharing, you could write a book. You could volunteer. You could mentor or coach other people. There's a lot of different ways to build a plan around those five pillars. So now that we've gone through the phases, let's do some tips on getting started to build a retirement filled with happiness, joy, and fulfillment. You know, just a couple of quick things. Yeah, so planning, we just talked about right. that. So you want to plan financially and the five pillars. You know, you want to execute on one step for each pillar. In other words, don't take on too much. So if you pick physical wellness, you know, walk 20 minutes a day, walk 30 minutes the next week. You know, I did this uh, program years ago called Add One, and every week you just added one more positive habit to your arsenal. You know, if, you, if your nutrition is what you're going to focus on, go online, get some healthy recipes, cook three or four days a week, stretch your meals out from dinner to lunch, eliminate some unhealthy foods, but do it one at a time. The other thing to do is create a community of others that want to have a better retirement. Talk to your friends. Who's looking to spend a little time planning? Who's looking to spend a little more time uh, feeling healthier, exercising, start a coffee group and talk about these things. So that's something that you could do for sure. And the other thing is watch all rest of our videos. We have so many videos on so many topics. If you search very specifically what you're looking for. And the big thing here in retirement for us is having a growth mindset. You, you know, really need to be able to think about learning more and changing. Yeah, that's a real catalyst to a fulfilling retirement is continuing that growth mindset. Our goal with this business is to help people just like you to find the path that best suits their retirement so that they can be happy and fulfilled. These phases are real and you have to find ways to move through them. We hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please share it with your friends. And also please hit the subscribe button and also the notification button so you know when our videos come out. And finally, join our free Facebook community. The link is in the notes below. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to being with you again soon.